Hello, hello. Welcome back to Life After Plus One. I'm Leanne, your podcast host and your single parent mentor and a coach. Today, I want to talk about a topic of are you sabotaging your relationships? Are you unknowingly destroying your relationships based on things that have happened in your past and you're scared of going down that path again? We're going to dive into that today. But before I go into that, don't forget there is a new ebook out on the website, Your Dating Guide for Single Parents. It covers everything you need to know when you're stepping back into the dating world from the first initial chat, your first date, maintaining your relationship, introducing your new partner to the kids and everything else in between. It's 135 pages of everything you need to know when you're stepping back into the dating world. Grab that. It's on the website and you can find the details in the show notes below. So jump onto the website lifeafterplus1.com if you're interested in upping your dating game to learn and make some positive changes for your new single parent dating experience. Let's all make some changes for the better and this is where it starts. All right, guys, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to the Life After Plus One podcast, where we turn life's lemons into delightful lemonade. Get ready for inspiring stories, uplifting conversations, and all the tips and tricks to rock your single parent journey with style. I'm your host, Leanne, and it's time to embrace the adventure of Life After Plus One. So let's dive in. Okay, so are you sabotaging your relationships? Are you meeting new people and doing things and putting your guard up and being unknowingly scared or maybe you are you do know that you're scared and fearful of going down the same path so you're sabotaging your relationships. Now quite often people don't realize in the moment that that's what they're doing. They're just handling a situation to what they think is the right thing to do in that moment. And it doesn't take Till you actually step back and look at the situation from the outside that you can see that that's what's happening. You're scared of getting hurt again so you're putting your guard up and you're avoiding any pain or hurt being inflicted on you whether it's emotional, verbal, whatever it is. You don't want to get hurt. So sometimes it's easier just to be withdrawn or not open up and have your walls up. There are other reasons why people sabotage their relationships such as low self-esteem. They believe they're not worthy of something. They believe they're not good enough. It's surprising the amount of people I've met that have gone on a date with someone and said, oh, they're out of my league, or they're too good for me, or I don't deserve that. Well, why don't you? What makes one person better than you? I can tell you now, the one thing that makes someone better than you is their confidence. It's got nothing to do with their looks, or their money, or their job, or their house, or their car. It comes down to their confidence. And when someone's thinking these things about someone else, thinking, oh, they're out of my league or I'm not good enough for them, it's because you're thinking that about yourself. You're thinking you're not good enough. Your confidence is not at a level of where it should be, which then impacts the relationship because you keep sabotaging things and doing things to prove a point that you're not good enough or prove a point that you're always wrong. Ah, it's always my fault. Ah, see, I'm always wrong. Yeah, you're right, I'm wrong. Those are the people that usually have that lack of confidence. They're lacking that self-worth. You don't want to be a yes sir, no sir kind of person. You want to be someone in a relationship who can speak up and give their thoughts and opinions. Know your worth when you're bringing someone new into your world. Another reason why people sabotage your relationships, unresolved baggage. Having past issues from previous relationships that you haven't got over And you've now gone into a new relationship, still feeling hurt and upset and abandoned from your past relationship. You haven't healed those wounds yet and you've just jumped into something new and you've got your guard up, worried that it's going to happen again because you haven't resolved that. You need to find a way to manage what's happened in the past and heal from that hurt. Learn to let it go before you can go and meet someone new. Another reason, just lack of trust. Lack of trust, which again can stem from previous relationships, betrayal, abandonment. So you're scared to trust someone. So you could be someone that constantly needs phone calls or you need to text someone all the time and see what they're doing or check their phone because you don't trust them, which that also stems from low self-esteem, lack of confidence in yourself. Because if you knew you were good enough, then you wouldn't be chasing someone to make sure that they're committed to you. 
you would know that they're committed to you. And if they're not, then you'd be confident enough in yourself to let it go. And another reason is just fear of intimacy. And that happens. Take our old mate Tristan on maths. For those of you out there that watch it. Yes, I do. I watch it. And he is sabotaging that beautiful relationship because of his low self-esteem and his fear of being intimate. Because he, he's even admitted to himself or admitted to Australia on the show that he hates himself. He hates himself. So he has got very low self-esteem and you can see how much that relationship has been impacted from the day they met to where they're at now on the show because of his self-esteem and he feels like he's not good enough. So he's draining the relationship of all the energy because he thinks he's not worthy of that and he's there's no intimacy there because he doesn't have that confidence to, to give that because he doesn't feel worthy of that. And those things are all things that sabotage a relationship. And I remember like I, when I first saw this in this guy on maths, I'm like, he is sabotaging this. His issues from the past are coming in and destroying this relationship. And he's putting it on her to some degree saying, oh, I'm always wrong. You're right. I'm wrong. I'm doing everything I can to make this work. He's playing the poor me card instead of owning it and stepping up. And these are all factors that sabotage a relationship. Now let's discuss some of the signs, some of the other signs that you can see when someone's sabotaging a relationship. Lack of commitment. People scared to commit. They'll just go from relationship to relationship. When it starts to get serious, boom, they're out. Next relationship, it goes well, goes fine, starts to get serious, boom, they're out. And people get like that. They're scared of commitment because they're scared of getting hurt or getting screwed over. Holding grudges. Holding grudges, not letting things go. It's okay for people to make mistakes. We're all human. We all make mistakes. But if you're going to hold a grudge towards someone, holding a grudge in a relationship will only create a negative impact. It's, it's just going to, you're constantly going to have anger towards someone because you're refusing to get over something because they may have hurt you once and you're so, you're scared of them maybe hurting you again or something happening again. So you just hold that grudge. You keep reminding them to make sure they don't do it again. Another sign, scared of dealing with negative emotions. And this is a common one. People don't like talking about things and you see it a lot. And it's such a common sign when you see it on online dating, when people say, I don't like drama. Nobody likes drama. Who likes drama? To me, when I read that someone saying, I don't like drama, is their way of saying, I don't deal with shit. I don't want to talk about anything. If there's anything that you don't like, I'm not dealing with it. I'm not talking about it because it's just going to start drama. That's what I take from it. Talking about reality, talking about feelings and emotions, talking about something that your partner may be unhappy about is not drama. It's called having open communication, not dealing with shit and having no level of communication when something's not right. That is creating drama. So when you come across someone that's not willing to deal with emotions or things that are happening within your relationship, they're avoiding that. They're scared of dealing with negative emotions. They're scared of dealing with something that might upset them or might upset someone else. And they're scared of fighting or they're scared of something happening that they don't know how to handle. So they just avoid it completely. It happens a lot. It does. It's a very unhealthy way of managing things, but for a lot of people, they think it's healthy because they're avoiding drama. But you can handle things as adults, because we're all adults here, we can handle things in a civil way by talking about things calmly and openly without having drama. By hiding your feelings and hiding what's actually wrong, it shows that you can't communicate effectively with your partner, which ends up creating drama. So someone that's not wanting to deal with negative emotions is sabotaging their relationship. They're hiding something or still unhealed from something that's happened in their past. So they're avoiding issues. They're avoiding dealing with the reality and they're not communicating. And that's a big thing, not communicating. I am huge on having open communication. I've said this so many times on different episodes. I have such an open communication with my daughter, like our relationship. We talk about everything. And I think that's so great. And I've even had people say to me, I love how you talk to your daughter. You're just so open with her. You talk about everything. Yes, I do. And I think it's great. And I think it's great that she can come and talk to me about everything. 
And I think that's such a, a good way to go through life instead of just bottling things up and getting to a point where you just explode or freak out at the wrong person because it's all just got too much and you've just kind of fizzled over and it's just boom, whoever's there is going to cop it. If you communicate things as they go, then you're not going to erupt when something small happens. You're going to deal with it as it arises. Another one, unspoken expectation. So when you expect something of your partner, but you're not telling them that, But in your head, you're expecting that. Oh, they should have known that. They should know that's what I like. They should know that they shouldn't say that. They should know that they shouldn't do that. Why should they know? Have you communicated that to them in the past? If you have, then yes, that's very different. If this is something you've openly discussed together, then yes. But if you're just starting in a relationship with someone and they've said something to you that may have upset you and you haven't said anything and you've just gone off and told your friends and they're like, and you've said to them, they should have known not to say that or they should have known not to do that. Why should they know? Maybe they thought you had a sense of humor. Maybe they didn't think you were going to get offended by it. Maybe they were just being an asshole. Who knows? But you can't expect people to read your minds. Do not have unspoken expectations. When you're going in a relationship with someone, you need to communicate where you're at and what you're thinking and feeling. Do not expect people to read your minds. This frustrates the bejesus out of me. The amount of people that I've met are like that and they think these things or they all of a sudden get all precious and upset. It's like, well, fuck, I can't read your mind. If you don't like it, tell me. And usually it's something so minor that it's just, they've just got all upset over something that's to them was huge, but to me it was nothing mean or nasty. But they've just taken it in the very wrong way. Because they're people that don't like to deal with stuff. So they hear stuff and they bottle it up. And then all of a sudden, boom, they erupt. It's all these patterns spiraling. Another one is just unrealistic expectations. You have unrealistic expectations on your partner. This could be anything from finances, from household chores to responsibilities with the kids, anything. You may have unrealistic expectations. You might expect... A woman, you met a woman, she's come into your world and you expect to move in together and you expect her to do all the household cleaning, the cooking and everything else like it's 1940. Meanwhile, here she is still working full time and you're working full time. You come home from work, you sit on the lounge, she's come, come home cooking, cleaning after being at work full time. Maybe in 1940s this was okay because most of the women didn't work back then. They stayed home and looked after the house and looked after the kids. Doesn't happen like that anymore. Women work full time. Most of us do. A lot of men do have the expectations that women still look after the house and do everything, yet women are still working full-time. These are unrealistic expectations. So you need to communicate with your partner. If you're not happy with that, you've got to communicate that. Now, there's lots of different things that could relate to this scenario of having unrealistic expectations, maybe expecting them to no longer associate with their friends now that you're in a relationship and expect them to spend all their free time with you. That's unrealistic. You need to continue your time with your friends. Could be related to money. So this again all comes down to communicating these expectations. And as I said earlier, just low self-esteem is a big one. Not being confident in yourself. And a lot of this confidence stems from past issues and past hurt issues that you may have come across in previous relationships. It could have been even something that you've dealt with in your childhood. You may have been bullied in school. You may have not had friends. You may have always felt left out in life. You may have always felt like a loner. So you've now in the dating world and you still kind of feel a bit like that. And it's affecting your self-worth and your self-worth is affecting your relationship. So if all of these things are happening, Why are people doing it? Why are people doing these things in relationships if it's going to create a negative impact? Well, it's a protection mechanism. They're protecting themselves. Scared of going down that same path again. Scared of getting hurt. So I'm going to protect myself so you can't hurt me. And a lot of times when people do that, they end up hurting the other person. And it's not intentional. It's not intentional. But people trying to protect themselves so much that they avoid it to the point that they end up hurting the other person. So some other examples that come into play when you're protecting yourself are staying in toxic relationships. And that's a a lot of people do it. You know it's not right. You know it's not healthy. And I see it all the time. People 
complain about their relationship. They know it's not right. They know what their partner's doing is unhealthy behavior, but they're scared to leave. So for them, it's safer to stay in a toxic relationship than it is to start something new. They're scared of the unknown. So they're just going to protect what they know and stay in that little safe bubble because it's easier to stay in a toxic relationship than to get up and do something different. Another way people protect themselves is by keeping their guard up, keeping guarded, keeping their walls up and not expressing their feelings. Sabotaging positive moments. I've seen this a lot when there's a really fun moment and it's all fun and everyone's enjoying themselves but they find some way to make it a negative. That is sabotaging behavior. And constantly dating unavailable partners. And you see this a lot. People keep saying, I keep attracting the same person. I keep attracting someone that's emotionally unavailable. Well, why? Why do you keep attracting the same kind of person? What are you giving out? Is that something that you're doing because maybe you're too scared to express how you're feeling? Are you emotionally available? Or are you changing something in yourself and the way and what you're putting out, what you're offering in a relationship to help you look for something different, to encourage you to see something different in a relationship, change your outlook so you don't keep attracting these same people. It also comes down to avoiding responsibility. There are a lot of people out there that like to play the poor me, stick in their little victim bubble and they don't like to take accountability. And That's sabotaging. They avoid responsibility, avoid taking accountability for anything. Another reason or another thing that people do when they're sabotaging relationships, controlling behavior, avoiding being vulnerable. So they just control it. They don't want to make it about them. They don't want to talk about what's wrong with them. So they control the situation so they can be in charge. And another reason, it's just familiar to them. It's what they know. They haven't changed anything. It's just maybe what they grew up with and that's just what they know. So that's just what they do. So there are a lot of patterns and a lot of reasons why people sabotage relationships. It's not something that maybe one person here might do and maybe one person over there might do. It's a very common thing. It's very common and it comes to a lot of underlying issues, which all comes back to you're just trying to protect yourself which is okay if it's managed properly. We all want to protect ourselves. Nobody wants to get hurt and nobody wants to deal with drama. But there's a way to do it and you've got to find a healthy way to do it. By sabotaging relationships is not the right way. So what do you do? How do you manage a relationship when you're so used to putting your guard up? You're so used to not communicating. You're so used to not dealing with shit. Can you see a pattern that's happening? It might not be these things, but there could be different things that have happened. So what do you do? As I was just saying, first step, recognize the patterns. Recognize these reoccurring relationship patterns. Are you in relationships where the same things keep happening over and over again? And you're like, for fuck's sakes, I can't deal with this anymore. Each person I meet, each girl I meet, each guy I meet, It's just the same situation over and over again. Now, step back and look at it. Why are these patterns happening? What's happening? Now, I'm not saying you're to blame, but is something happening from your end? Is it because you're not being open with that person and not communicating to them? You're not telling them how you feel? Is it because you have unrealistic expectations on them or unspoken expectations? You're thinking all these things of what you're expecting them to do and they're not doing it. So you're getting the shits and it's end up in a big fight because you haven't told them what you think and then you've got the shits to them over something that they had no idea was something that was even pissing you off. So something could have happened where the other person might have reacted to you and you just think, oh, well, these assholes keep doing the same thing to me. But are you doing something on your end that's triggering that behavior from them? Is there something on your side that you can step back on and reflect and go, yeah, okay, I need to learn to speak up more or I need to learn to be more confident in myself. I need to learn to not be scared of dealing with real issues that arise in a relationship. There's lots of things. There's lots of things. So what to do to avoid sabotaging a relationship is to step back and look at the reoccurring patterns that are happening in your relationships. What's happening the same? Are you attracting the same types of relationships over and over again with the same patterns and the same thing keeps happening? 
If so, step back and look at it and ask yourself, what can you do differently? What can you manage differently on your end so this stops or this changes? And it won't change overnight. It is a gradual process. But recognizing it is the first step. That's the first step. What can you manage differently or what can you control differently on your end to avoid being in this situation again? Because remember, you cannot change the other person. You're not trying to change anybody else. You're trying to be a better person in yourself and you're trying to learn how to manage things in a healthier way. That's what this is about. What else can you do when you're in this situation where you've recognized that you keep sabotaging relationships? Well, address what are the underlying issues? You may have stepped back and gone, okay, I see that maybe I could have communicated or I see that maybe I was expecting too much of this person. Why are you like this? What's the underlying issue behind all that? Why are you scared to speak up? Why do you think you are not good enough? Are these things that you can address? Why do you have low self-esteem? Why are you not trusting somebody? And address these issues. And even if you don't have an answer to that, you may not be equipped to come up with these resolutions on your own. So the fact that you can just figure out what it is, is enough to discuss in a relationship. If you've recognized these patterns and you're with someone, point it out to them. Sorry, I do have an issue with trusting. I do have an issue with speaking up when something's not right. Talk to them about it. And even if you can't figure out why you're like that, what's the underlying issue that's created you to be like this, if you can pinpoint that in a relationship, then that's the positive. That's huge. And it helps your partner to be more flexible and understanding. So when you're in that situation, they can be like, okay, I get it. She's got a little bit of a trust issue or um, she doesn't feel good enough. I've got to be a little bit more cautious in that. But you don't want it to be to the point where your partner has to walk on eggshells for you. But just knowing that these issues are there and understanding that that's what's affecting why you're sabotaging these relationships is a great place to start. And communicate this openly, which is kind of what I was just saying. Talk about it with your partner or when you're starting a new relationship, when you're meeting someone new and you're getting into a relationship, communicate openly and be open and honest about your fears or about your things that scare you the most in relationship. Be open and honest because you don't want to be in a relationship where you think to yourself, oh, I'm scared of getting hurt or I get really jealous or I don't know. There could be lots of different things. And you sit there and think on it and then they might do something and then you might react because that's bothered you. That's been a fear of yours. But if you've communicated that from the get-go, they might be a bit more understanding. Go, Okay, I get it. I understand. And they might be a bit more patient with that and a bit more accommodating. So know what your insecurities are not so much your insecurities I know what triggers you in a relationship and learn how to address that learn how to address it when you're meeting someone new you don't have to meet someone off the bat and go okay straight away I struggle with trust I struggle with being honest I struggle with intimacy no but as you get to know someone and the relationship starts to grow you can talk to this person about that just say okay this is where I'm at I do struggle with confidence a little bit. I really want to let you in my world, but confidence is not my strong point. Or maybe I'm not someone that likes to say I love you or I don't hold hands or I don't kiss and hug in public. There are a lot of people like that. Maybe you can express that because they might be someone that does like to hold hands. And maybe that's something that you're scared of. You're scared of doing that because maybe you're fearful that someone might judge you or you're not confident in yourself and maybe you feel like you're not good enough. So these are things that you can address. Go... I I do really like you, but I don't show it in that way. I show it in this way. So learning how to express and openly be honest about your fears and your relationship patterns that have caused your previous ones to sabotage or to not go well. And like I said, it's not necessarily something that I'm pointing on you. Relationships are based on two people. It's based on two people, but two people know need to know how to communicate these and need to know how to work through these together. And that's why you need to be open and honest about it from the get-go. And like I said, not from the first date. You don't sit down on the first date and go, by the way, I'm not going to trust you. I need to check your phone. I need to do this. No, but you need to express that and be honest. If you see something you don't like or something you're unsure of or something that may have triggered you from a previous relationship, don't just sit there and bottle it up and then go back to your friends and go, he's a fucking asshole. He did this. Speak about it openly. Learn to communicate and say, okay, that's where he's at. I'm not sure I like that. I've got to find a way to let him know because that triggers me a little bit. That's what it comes down to. Instead of just 
erupting and flipping your lid and going off at them or recognizing, okay, these things do bother me because I've been through down this path before. I've been cheated on or I've been lied to. I've been with a partner that just never trusted me. You've got to communicate this and just say, okay, this is where I'm at. I'm working through this in myself. I'm learning to be more confident. So just be patient with me. And I'm growing every day and I'm being a better person every day because I'm listening to the Life After Plus One podcast. <laughs> but it's, that's what it's about. It's just about recognizing things that you could have done better in previous relationships and you're learning as you grow. And that's what life's about. We, we learn as we grow and that's it. That's what this is all about. And don't forget, be kind to yourself. We're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Nobody handles things in a perfect way every single time. We all make fuck ups. We all do. That's life. We all wing it as we go. And I've said that multiple times on different episodes. We're not given some perfect guidebook every morning when we wake up and go, okay, this is how we're going to manage this. When this happens, this is what we're going to do here. This is what we're going to No, we just wing it as we go. Something shit might happen. So we go, okay, shit, could have done that better. I won't handle it like that next time. That's what life's about. We look at what we've done wrong and we look at what we can maybe do better next time. So be kind to yourself. Don't sit there and go, oh, fuck, yeah, I fucked up. I didn't trust them or I lied to them or I cheated on them or I did this or I did that. Nobody is perfect. We all fuck up. And quite often things that happen bad in relationship is usually stem from someone just trying to protect themselves and unfortunately it ends up being a negative impact on the other person. But if these things were communicated effectively from the beginning, then there'd be no issue. Well, maybe there would be, but hopefully you could work it out together. So going back on a previous example where I said before where there's situations where it might be a positive time and there might be something really fun happening, but you've been someone that might sabotage it. You're like, oh, this is too good to be true. This, this can't be right. And then something happens and the whole day's gone to the shit. And I've been in situations where that's happened. Something really good's happened and it's just boom, sabotage. What the fuck just happened? Just had a really good day and then it's just gone to the shit. The complete, it's gone from one extreme to the other. And that's a sabotaging technique. It is. And it's very unhealthy behavior. But it's usually, again, I think it's too good to be true. So let's just ruin it. It's, this can't be right. This can't be real. And that's why a lot of the times people do bad things or unhealthy things in a relationship because one, they don't know how to manage it properly. They don't know how to communicate it properly. Or two, they just think they're not good enough. They think they're not good enough or they think that something bad's going to happen to them. So let's just go out and do something so I can't get hurt. That way I'm out of the picture and I'm not hurt. I'm okay. I'm safe. And it's a very selfish way of dealing with it because they've gone now and put the hurt on the other person. But that's usually what it comes down to. They've sabotaged it in a way of avoiding any hurt happening to them. Something better might have come along. Oh, let's just go to this because this isn't going well. So they're probably just going to hurt me. So I might just go off to this because it's looking really good. But then they've just hurt this person. Did that all make sense? That was a bit of a tongue twister. But what I'm getting at is it all comes down to we're protecting ourselves. We don't want to get hurt. We don't know how to communicate that properly. We don't know how to recognize our triggers and what's affected us and what's caused us to react this way. And it's all just exploded in an unhealthy way. But don't forget, relationships are based on two people. Don't take sole responsibility yourself. And don't sit there and think, oh, I fucked up. I could have done this better. I could have done this better. I could have done. No, that's what life's about. We're here to learn as we go. We're here to learn as we go. And that's why we're here listening to this. So hopefully next time you can step back and recognize these patterns that have maybe come up in your previous relationships. These reoccurring situations that keep happening. This person keeps lying to me. I keep meeting people that just keep lying to me. I keep meeting people that just won't open up and talk to me when that's all I want. I just want people to communicate with me, but I can't find these people. Are you putting that out there? Recognize what you can maybe do differently recognize your patterns. Are you sabotaging anything on your end? Are you putting your wall up? Are you not communicating? Are you having unrealistic expectations? Are you not communicating your expectations? Are you being controlling of a situation because you're scared of being vulnerable? You're scared of having to open up. You're scared of losing the control or you're just used to doing this pattern. You're just used to it. It's what you've seen. It's what you grew up with. It's how your parents were and you've just followed it on. So like I said, step back and reflect on your previous relationships. 
reflect on the patterns and what can be changed in yourself and how you manage situations and look at the underlying issues. If you can work out what's causing you to react this way, then great, that's perfect. But if you can't, then that's okay. But as long as you recognize what they are, you don't have to recognize why you're doing it, but if you recognize what they are, example, trusting, um, low self-esteem, those kinds of things. If you can recognize that, then that's a great thing. And then you can address that in your next relationship. I'm a little bit shitty with my confidence or I'm a little bit bad at whatever else. Address that and be open and honest about things that scare you in a relationship. Okay, because if you keep that in and you keep meeting someone and you're not addressing this, when it comes up again, you're just going to explode and probably sabotage the next relationship, which is what we don't want to happen. So be open and honest about where you're at and be open and honest about what you're learning in yourself or where you're at. I've noticed that this is my pattern. You don't have to communicate it that way, but I've noticed that these are patterns that keep coming up in a relationship and that's something I, don't, I want to try and avoid. So find someone that's open to communicate these things with you and don't forget to be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. We all fuck up. Nobody has a perfect relationship and nobody is perfect in life. Nobody handles situations perfectly every single time. We're all just learning as we grow. And this is what the whole point of this podcast is about, to learn as we grow, to learn new steps to manage your single parenting in a healthier way and in a happier way. So when you do have your next relationship, it's a healthy, happy one. And it's one that you want to bring your kids into, which can then evolve into a new relationship where you've brought in a new parental figure for your kids, which is someone that you want to be a good role model for them. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be a new mom or a new dad, but when you have a new partner where you've moved on and in a long-term relationship, then they will take a parental figure role with your kids and you want someone that's going to be a good role model for them and you want to have that kind of relationship that's going to be good for the kids a healthy one for the kids. You may not be married, but a good kind of family relationship that makes the kids feel comfortable and happy. And that's what you want. And that's what the kids see. And don't forget, the kids always see and copy off our behaviors. So be positive and always, 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 and I say this nearly every episode, keep that open line of communication. Communicate, communicate, communicate. It's my favorite word. Talk about everything. And one of the things I always say is there's always a way to say something there's all you always hear people say I, I can't say that or I can't say this yes you can there's always a way to say something just find a kind way to say it you don't have to say things in a hurtful way oh fuck it I say everything I say what's on my mind that's great but can we do it in a kind way okay you can talk about anything you can get anything you want off your chest but do it in a kind way all right that's about it for me I'm going to wrap it up. So let's not sabotage any more future relationships. Let's learn from this. Let's learn what we've been doing in our past relationships and what those patterns are and let's change it so we can have healthier and happy relationships in the future. And you're not going to have the perfect relationship straight off the bat. Well, fuck, maybe you will and that's fucking amazing. But you're going to slowly learn and recognize these patterns and you're going to slowly make changes. But if you've got someone that's quite... uh, open-minded and flexible and can work with you and communicate with this with you then that's great there's no reason why I can't work straight away but keep that open line of communication where you're at and if something upsets you and triggers you and bothers you and you see it re- recurring from the past address it find a way to address it so you don't just sit there and bottle it up or sabotage it and destroy everything All right, that's about it from me today. So I hope you got something from this. Let's strive towards having those beautiful, healthy, happy relationships and we're not going to sabotage any more relationships in the future. And just remember, if you're struggling to go through this process on your own, then jump onto my website. I have a free discovery call available and lots of different sessions that can help you walk through the process of single parenting to make it that much more enjoyable and so much more fun fun and easier so jump on there it's all on my website lifeafterplusone.com that's it from me today guys and I like I always say I hope you got something from this episode and until next time I'll be in your ears then 
Thank you for joining us on the Life After Plus One podcast. If you loved what you heard today and looking for some further support, then jump onto our website, lifeafterplusone.com. Plus, don't forget to check out our Instagram page for further resources and inspo. You can find all the links in the show notes. And remember, you're not alone on this path. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. And in the meantime, keep thriving, keep growing, and keep exploring your amazing life after plus one. Thank you.